Hi, it's Dr. Ken here with you again. Active listening skills number two. Learning happens when meaning is achieved. Meaning is equal to the amount of time you spend multiplied by the effort. You can see I like mathematics, but that's the reality. To make meaning, it takes time, it takes effort. So, how can we use active learning skills to make our time of learning, particularly in formal classes, as effective as possible? There is little purpose if you don't want to understand. Now that might seem a strange thing for a teacher to say. But I find a lot of students want to do the minimum to get the minimum passed and that will be enough. But unfortunately in electrotechnology there is little purpose if you don't want to understand. And because of the non-sensory nature of electrical physics, understanding is actually paramount. You can't remember all the tools, all the maths, all the ins and outs, unless you make the effort to understand the physics itself. So before we get into listening as a skill, you need to have a purpose or the required effort won't be available. Active listening takes a lot of effort. It is not about what to learn, electrical physics, or how to learn, active listening in this case, until you have a why. So what is your why? I can't answer that for you, but the why is that will drive you and motivate you. The rest is a waste until you kind of get that sorted. So you need to spend some time thinking about why you want to learn electrical physics. For me, the why is that I simply love techie stuff, always have, even making these lessons is me playing with techie stuff and for me it's highly motivating. So now let's get into the five aspects of good listening. So the first one is paying attention. May seem obvious. Give the speaker your undivided attention and knowledge and acknowledge the message. Recognise that non-verbal communication also speaks very loudly. Look at the speaker directly when not writing your notes. Put aside distracting thoughts. Actively work against daydreaming or checking your phone. Probably best to leave that in your bag or it's not going to distract you. Don't mentally prepare a rebuttal or a why not argument. Remember, there could be misconceptions that you need to have and to challenge. But at the same time, if they're not answered, keep them in the back of your mind to bring them up at the appropriate time. Avoid being distracted by environmental factors. For example, side conversations like chatting to your mates about what you're going to be doing for morning tea or how boring you're finding this particular part of the lesson. You need to encourage your mates to concentrate as much as you need to pay attention. Number two, show that you're listening. Use your own body language and gestures to convey that you are showing attention. This helps the teacher as they read your feedback on the run during the lesson. Not occasionally, if a concept is coming together for you, ask a question if not. Smile and use other facial expressions. Show that you're appreciating the learning. And obviously conversely, show that you're not appreciating or getting the learning. And the teacher will stop and ask you. Note your posture. Make sure it is open and you're interested in the learning. As a teacher, I can very quickly tell from someone's posture they're not actually interested in the lesson. And if the student is not interested in the lesson, 
it's like very difficult for me as a teacher to be interested in making sure they get it. So encourage the teacher, the speaker, to continue by using occasional questions to clarify your learning as you go. Number three, provide feedback when appropriate. Our personal filters, our assess, assumptions, judgments, and beliefs can distort what we're actually hearing. As listener, your role is to understand what is being said. This may require you to reflect what is being said and ask questions. Ask questions first of yourself, and then ask some clarifying questions of the teacher. Reflect what has been said by paraphrasing. What I'm hearing is, da 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 da, -da and sounds like you are saying, etc etc etc, are great ways to reflect and give feedback. So you ask the teacher, what I'm hearing is that electrical current in DC flows from the positive to the negative. Have I got that right? Those kinds of things. What am I hearing is, sounds like you are saying. Not only are you confirming it for yourself, but actually saying it out loud, you're actually confirming it in your own mind and helping others to think through it as well. Ask questions to clarify certain points. What do you mean when you say, etc. Is this what you really mean? Explaining a concept in your own words is very helpful to the teacher. It helps the teacher dig down and say, yes, that student is understanding the concept of the physics. So what do you mean when you say, and is this what you mean? And summarize the teacher, the speaker's comments by taking your own notes or adding to the notes that have been provided. Quite often teachers will provide notes for the lesson Make sure that uh, you've got a copy of the notes either given out with a lesson or maybe you've got a download from a electronic learning resource before the lesson. But by adding notes to the lesson will help you get that feedback or be able to provide it for your own benefit. Four, defer judgment. In interrupting inappropriately is a waste of time. It frustrates the speaker and limits full understanding of what is being commented. And when I say interrupting inappropriately, sometimes that's directly, sometimes that's indirectly. Students may, in the back row, decide that they want to have an off-the-side conversation and they're distracting the teacher, they're distracting other students, those kinds of things. So you can interrupt directly and indirectly. How the speaker or the teacher to finish each point before asking a question. So allow the whole concept to have been delivered and then ask your question. Choose an appropriate moment to break in. That's just good manners. Don't interrupt with a counter argument or frivolous questions. Ask well thought out, well directed questions demonstrate that you're learning and digging down. Sometimes your inquiry is better answered at the end or at when there is a natural break in the delivery or the conversations in the lesson. So again, it takes some social skill to be able to say, this is not the appropriate time to ask this question. I'll wait till the end or I'll wait till it's a natural break. Five, respond appropriately. Active listening is a model for respectful learning and understanding. You're gaining information and perspective. You add nothing by attacking the speaker or otherwise putting him or her down. So be candid and open and honest in your responses, but with respect in your tone and your manner. I, as a teacher, I reckon once a week will make a mistake in a calc or something or a spelling on the whiteboard 
and my students will interrupt and correct me respectfully. That is great, everybody learns. But if you do it just to put the teacher down, guess what? The teacher is not going to be motivated to help you. Again, assert your opinions and your questions respectfully. Respect the teacher, respect your classmates, respect all involved in the learning because you are learning interdependently. You're learning in and through each other. Which leads to the third point, treat the other person in a way that you think he or she would want to be treated, whether that's the teacher or that's asking questions of the classmates and the people with whom you are learning. So our take homes from active listening. It takes a lot of concentration and determination to be an active listener. It does, it takes a lot of effort. Old habits are hard to break. And if your listening skills are as bad as many people's are, then there's a lot of habit breaking that needs to be done. It is so easy to fall back into making fun of what's going on because you don't understand. Be deliberate with your listening and remind yourself frequently that your goal is truly to hear what the teacher is saying. Set aside all other thoughts and behaviours and concentrate on the message of the lesson. Ask questions, reflect, paraphrase to ensure you've understood the message and make sure you're taking notes. If you don't, then you'll find that someone says to you and what you hear can be amazingly different. Ending up with a zero sum is little or no learning. Start using active listening techniques today to become a better communicator. Improve your learning, your efficiency, even your workplace productivity and develop better all-round relationship skills. So I hope you've enjoyed our number two, active listening skills will help you with your learning.